Hi, everyone. Uh, my, my name is Matan, and I'm here on behalf of MedicBridge. What is MedicBridge? MedicBridge is a medical humanitarian aid conference with participation with, of both Israeli and foreign medical students in the new Safed branch of Bar Ilan University Faculty of Medicine. Our vision is placing the medical humanitarian aid in Israel in the international spot. Our main objective is improving these foreign students' impression of Israel. What do they think of Israel? That's our general object. Method. In this conference, there will be many different meetings between different organizations and programs with these foreign medical students. First of all, there will be professional lectures by top Israeli doctors. For instance, doctors that are here to show the, the new ingenuity and new advances in the medical industry in Israel. There will be presentations by pharmaceutical companies and biomed companies about new technological ingenuity in Israel with anything that has to do with, with the medical advances. There will be uh, presentations of the medical humanitarian cooperations between Palestinians and Israelis. For instance, there is an amazing cooperation between Israelis and Palestinians in Hadassah in, Hadassah in Karim, in the, in the hospital in Jerusalem, where Palestinians and doctors and Israeli doctors work together. That's a great example that we can show them. There will be uh, sessions with participants from humanitarian aid missions. There are amazing, amazing, amazing humanitarian aid missions that Israel sends to the world. For instance, the, l the last largest one that was very well known in the news was the one to Haiti, where they opened up uh, different hospital, field hospitals and they really took care of, of, of the local population there. And uh, the delegation that was almost sent to Japan and other places in the world. There will be lectures by military doctors. For instance, uh, an encounterment between um, uh, a Israeli reserve, uh, reserve uh, army doctor um, that actually took care of a Palestinian family um, that rocks were thrown at their car and they got injured by Palestinians that thought that they were Israelis but there was an Israeli doctor that took care of them and it's very important to show to the world these are, these are Palestinians that Israeli doctors and military doctors took care of them and if you ask any person in the world that's something that will happen in many other Arab countries. I don't think that that's going to happen, and I don't think they, they'll know that that's going to happen. And that's very important. There'll be presentations by leading Israeli humanitarian organizations. In Israel, we have many different humanitarian aid organizations that do amazing jobs, such as Eye for Zion, such as uh, Save a Child's Heart, Le Lev La Shalom, organizations that deal both with Israeli and Palestinian and not just the Palestinian, but also the Arab Israeli population in Israel. Um, and they do amazing things that not, not a lot of people in the world know about. And we, we're going to try and portray that and show that. And obviously meetings discussing future cooperations. Our target audience is outstanding medical students from European faculties of medicine. These students may or may not be from different places in the world, but we're targeting specifically from, from Europe. Project objectives. First and foremost, enriching the knowledge of these foreign students' knowledge about Israeli ingenuity and medical ingenuity and about the humanitarian, humanitarian aid that's, that's, been, that's been done in Israel. Second of all, creating a personal bondage between foreign medical students and Israeli medical students. You can kind of, it might be the same as what, what people see in Tanglit when there are people that come to Israel and, uh, and soldiers that accompany them. When you have both medical students and from, from two different countries, they bond and they talk and a lot of what's going to be passed in this kind of uh, project will be, be between these, these people. Um, and uh, last, creating the, uh, exposing the high standards of the new Bar Ilan Faculty of Medicine in Sfat. This is a new branch. People in Israel hardly know of it. And it's also a great opportunity to show it in Israel 
to show that there's a big international conference in Israel, in this place, and also to expose it to the world. Measures of success. We know that three years ago there was an amazing project called HMC in Tel Aviv. And I, I, we chose not to, to touch it right now, not to talk about it yet, but they, they had 70 uh, international participants. And we see uh, as, as a good criteria uh, and a measure of success as at least 80 international students, at the minimum. It could be more. It obviously is a, a matter of, of um, budget and other kind of um, criteria. We want coverage uh, of at least three major Israeli and at least two major foreign news agencies. We don't want a small newspaper from... Arkansas. We want big new agencies, at least two, um, showing these um, this project. Another great measure, measure measure of success is future cooperation and exchange students between Barilan and these and the students from the schools where these students come from. And obviously, and I think most important is the positive feedback that we get from the participants. I know that HMC had amazing, amazing, amazing uh, f uh, feedback. It was very, very successful, and that's how we know that we succeed in this uh, project. Timeline. Uh, it's a little bit complex, but there are certain things that are going to have to be uh, dealt as fast as possible. For instance, up to the <coughs> retreat uh, in March, uh, middle of March, you have to set the dates, uh, the structure, the main outline of the project, initial advertisement, and you have to contact the different uh, partners of the project. Uh, later on, we'll have to distribute uh, the application forms, send press releases, and um, confirmation of final uh, schedule uh, and end of registration. And finally, after notifying the acceptance of the participants, to finalize the program schedule and to conclude the, the logistical and technical arrangements. Potential partners. We think that this project has many, many potential partners and sponsors. It doesn't have to be only public uh, groups, but it could be also private um, companies. First and foremost, IDF, Pikud uh, Aorif, Dover Tzal, different, different uh, personal people from, from, from the IDF reserve units that, um, that will be able to deal with the project. It has to do with also with the Ministries of Health, Ministry of Education, and uh, it's also a great opportunity to, to have the Ministry of Development of the Negev and the Gali because we want, to, we want the project to be in the new branch in the, in the Galil, and that's a, a, a great opportunity to expose that area. The participation also of humanitarian organizations such as, as I said before, I for Zion, Save a Child's Heart, Leva Shalom, um, to come and show uh, what they're doing and how we can involve them in the project. And finally, Israeli pharmaceutical and biomed companies to show the advances, to show the medical ingenuity, to show what they have, uh, what we have to offer, and the universities that the students come from. The budget. The budget here is that is proposed is has to do with 80, 80 foreign participants. 20 Israeli medical students and whoever is obviously in this room. Um, it could be much more, it could be much less. It depends on how many people participate. Um, this is uh, more or less what we think uh, will, what it will include. Group participation. This kind of project has huge participation by the group. It has to do with pre preparing and, and sending the application forms, monitoring the people that are com coming in and get accepted organizing the conference, fundraising, public relations, and even coordinating between, between the different partners. And obviously the most important part, a, a conference with, a, with 100 people has a lot of monitoring to do with a lot of, a lot of um, on-site coordination, and this is what uh, our group uh, could do. Finally, I want to say three important things. Barilan Faculty of Medicine, as I said, isn't known. This is a huge, huge op opportunity to really show what they have to offer, and it's a, a great uh, opportunity for for um, 
for the university. Second of all, HMC three years ago was huge success. Huge, huge success. And, and whoever looks in YouTube and you, you write HMC, you see amazing responses. But we really think that we don't have to be HMC, but we can take that success, leverage it, elevate it, and create something new and, and even better. And we're not, we're not ashamed of saying that. We can make something better and even more uh, that, with more success. And finally, when, when we looked for pictures in, uh, for this, for this uh, presentation, we, we wrote in Google, humanitarian aid in Israel. And it was actually Ayelet, she told me this yesterday. And she told me that whatever she found were sites about Palestinians and, and a lot of things that, that we, wouldn't, we wouldn't really be proud of. And I think that this is, is, one, is one of those projects, one of those things that can really make that difference. This is what can put us in the humanitarian medical uh, front line and really be proud of. Thank you very much. Black. Um, I am uh, studying political science, communication, and Judaism here in Berlin. Hi, I'm Nihon. I'm studying Arabic in the Arabic department in Berlin. Betsalem Marcus. I'm studying biophysics. And I'm a fan of study law. So that was that for a great presentation, Mulash. I really like the fact that you combined the personal story and really emphasized this very, very good. So that. Um, I have a question. You mentioned HMC, and it's a good thing that you did because HMC, as you said, was a great success, and it's definitely something that we could, and it would be a challenge to take up uh, and do it once more. But my question is, what are you guys offering that's going to be different? Because you're offering Spot, okay, which is the new branch, but it's new. I mean, it won't be even a year to its foundation, and and what what does it have to offer today? What is the advantage here? Why not just agency again in Tel Aviv? Um, well, first of all, this is a great opportunity for Barlon University to showcase um, this new branch um, for medical uh, medical faculty. Uh, second of all, this is showing that not only is it uh, Tel Aviv and the regular faculties that we already know, this is an expanding uh, part of Israeli medicine technology. Um, agency was fantastic success, and we hope that we'll be able to make something uh, greater than that. But it's amazing that still after that, um, as uh, Matan just said from the story, humanitarian aid Israel still brought up only negative images, which means we still need to be pushing this forward. The job has not been done um, with HMC. We still need to push forward and showcase that the most important thing right now um, and that one of the aspects of Israel is not the conflict. It's, <coughs> it's the technology. It's the, the fact that we keep growing. It's the fact that things change here and there are new things. The fact that it's brand new is actually <coughs> something that I find wonderful about this project because I can see, wow, this is just open and look what we can do with it. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> what is more interesting that the Faculty of Medicine, in fact, is built in only eight months. So it's also a success. Did you had your research about the uh, agency? Did you mm -hmm. saw how many, uh, oh, what, what was uh, their budget? About the budget, I'm not sure, but we ask about the participants. Yeah, well, but the most important thing when you talk about $100,000, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Basically, I mean, if it's something that has already been done, so maybe no, no one. Um, I, I can do try. you know something about I can try. What, what we did, we, we did estimates, and um, uh, the cost in Tel Aviv and in Spot can be very different. There's different transportation. There's uh, kind of accommodation, even meal. Everything can be different, and it's hard to to, to calculate it. But we, we, I, I could tell you what, what are, were our estimates. We estimated 
how much the flight may cost, how much meals may cost. And we did talk to different, like we talked to people from Tagliet and the different we, uh, transportation company. We, we kind of had a different uh, kind of uh, idea of how much it costs. But I also think that this kind of project can actually have many different type, types of endorsements. It, it might look like a lot of money, but there are also many participants that can actually be involved in it. But, but we are not sure that this is the amount of money, because then again, you don't, we didn't uh, check it, that's uh, my point of view. And one other thing is, if they had such a great project, really, it was a, a huge project, and I don't know, you are saying that they had 70, so you, you guys want to be at least 80? Little bit, I don't know. When, when you're adding to a, to an already success, then I, I would expect that after HNC left such a good impression on different faculties around the world, mm -hmm. then it would be easier when you come second time around. It's uh, it's just leveraging that success. So we're hoping to to extend it by another ten participants. Um, about the budget, this is preliminary. Uh, I'll agree with you that uh, that it's very hard to tell how much it's going to cost, especially since we're expanding on what HNC already did. Um, so we will, this is obviously one of the first things that we want to do uh, when we, if we get started working on it, is to make sure that the numbers are concrete, making sure that we know exactly where they're coming from, so we know how much the flights cost. It's something that is very malleable, um, and as soon as we have concrete uh, facts, then we will obviously do the fundraising accordingly. Um, I'll just say on that note that the budget is almost exactly the same, only that you guys have, um, suggested $50,000 for flights where, and usually Sam would ask a project, you don't pay for flights, but the participants pay for flights, so it's not in the budget, usually, but you know, that's pretty much the only difference. I, I, I have a different question. Um, I think this project is an easy sell. I think it's a brilliant, I mean, you know, you, this picture says it all, uh, but I think uh, you, you lack severe inefficiency. Uh, I, I, I agree with Dana, uh, this is a new school, Tzfat. So it's already not what Tel Aviv has. Adding on 10 and your $100,000, okay, if you take all of the Stand With Us projects until today, it's probably more than $100,000, but it's not far from it. That's a huge sum, and that means that putting your team together, you can have a whole lot of people only doing that and not work, working on the content. Did you check, for example, how many foreign students, med students there are in Israel today? Okay, I think that's an important question. What, if you are, I mean, HMC was a success, I don't see here, and I think it's a brilliant idea, but if you really want to make it better, take the same idea, but perhaps you're talking about a different audience. Perhaps it's foreign students here, they're yeah. If you check which countries they come from, that could also solve that. You might have Kenyans and people from Angola and out of nowhere. Another question is, do you incorporate bloggers into this or journalists? You know, you see $100,000, it's a lot. It's a brilliant project. These are things that you have to check. Uh, because that's it's, it's inefficient, it's especially a problem for a donor. If you go to someone you want to raise money, you know, he looks at that and you show him the success before. I'll ask how much was a pen and, like, done a the tickets. You know, that's, that's my big question. Right? Um, I'll it here. Um, obviously, uh, that's what this panel is for, to kind of poke all the problems in the project and make sure that we have uh, everything down before you guys uh, make your decision. Uh, so obviously, these are the first things that are going to be done, uh, again, if this project is uh, chosen. Um, with endorsements and things like that, uh, you know, there are many pharmaceutical companies here in Israel that, uh, Baruch Hashem, have a lot of money. And uh, the, the things with sponsors and endorsements, it, it's things that can be done. There's a there's a lot of money in this industry. Um, it's it's a it's an important project. It uh, it sells in the newspapers. It's a, it has a lot of opportunity for a lot of different people to want to have their name on it. So I think uh, with fundraising, um, I'm hoping that uh, a certain amount of people from the team would be efficient enough in, in raising the amount of money that we need. And obviously the amount uh, we will check what's going to be the final uh, number once we have uh, better information. But once that happens, I think that uh, we're a very efficient group, and I trust that my team will be able to uh, to get that going very quickly, and uh, and and then we'll see how we go from there. I'd like to add that this template can change, and this budget that we gave doesn't have to be the budget in the end, and it can be more similar budget to what HMC had. Point is that HMC was a success, and to have a similar structure is is what we want to have, 
and over and make it even better. So that's a pun, and if we we don't have to get stuck in this point of the of the budget because we're we're talking here with, with not anything substantial yet. So it's something that can change and you can improve. Okay. Um, I have to, as an HMC representative, I have to say, uh, first of all, I think you guys are very brave. Uh, some people might think it's easy to take a successful idea and run with it again, but I think uh, you guys are very brave. I think you can make it completely your own. Uh, whatever agency was, I have no doubt that you can do it bigger and better because I, I've seen the potential uh, that this kind of concept has and, and I have no doubt that you can bring more participants and, and do it bigger and better. So don't worry about that. That's not my concern. Uh, but I do have two concerns. First of all, uh, Israel does a lot in the field of humanitarian aid, but it's also a field that we get a lot of criticism in. Uh, there's a lot of things that we don't do, there's a lot of things that we do badly, uh, and I just want to know if you guys have kind of thought about that, uh, about, you know, it's very easy to say in the year that HMC uh, took place, there was the flotilla to Gaza and the humanitarian crisis, and those things come up a lot. As soon as you put Israel and humanitarian aid in the same sentence, you're going to get a lot of criticism. So I just want to know if you guys have thought about that and how you could deal with that. And my second question is, which is even more important, uh, which is one of the things that HMC, I wouldn't say failed, but uh, didn't follow up enough, was the actual follow up with the participants. One of the things that we asked is that each participant you know, goes home and shares their experiences and writes about it and everybody promised to do it and a small percentage of them actually did. Um, so I want to know if you guys had any thoughts about how to make sure that the word actually gets out there and it doesn't just stay with these 80, 90, 100 participants that you're going to bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. About your first thing, question. We didn't talk about it. Uh, because as far as we know, we want to focus on the positive side of Israel and humanitarian. Uh, because as you know, 10 years ago, uh, approximately, um, uh, the earthquake in Turkey. So the audience in Israel is known for its good um, goodwill to help and to be, to be in the spotlight for its good reasons. Um, um, also, that's uh, one of uh, one of the elements we said in uh, how how it's going to actually play out. Uh, the conference is discussion with people that have actually gone there, uh, discussions with the doctors that were there in the field. They'll be there to answer those questions. Obviously, Israel is not perfect, and I'm sure they'll say that as well. Um, but this is uh, why we need this type of uh, stage to uh, to broadcast the fact that yes, we're not perfect, but this is all we're trying to do, and uh, to kind of. Uh, veer the spotlight from all the problems that Israel has with humanitarian aid and I really can't explain how negative the images were uh, even just with Google images uh, humanitarian aid Israel was just a lot of uh, a lot of not humanitarian aid um, so so that's why I believe that this is so important because of because of the the we call it that you're saying um, but for your second question with the follow-up I think maybe uh, to add it to the method is maybe have a um, a session with how to how to how to write it, how to already do the feedback while they're <coughs> in the conference, um, and in that kind of uh, when it's fresh on their minds and we still can see them, then have them do the feedback and broadcast it from where they are, and then that's already been done. And then whatever they do when they get home, it'll just be the cherry on the cake. Can I add something to your second question? Um, I, I think the, the the target audience, um, these participants. They're not bloggers, they're not news, news reporters, they're not very influential people, maybe in their communities uh, in the future, but what's really important is how they act, I think. I, I, personally, I don't, I don't know how much they'll be able to influence their communities in, in a large scale, like maybe bloggers or someone else, but if we touch them, then their lives might change in a way that in the future they will act positively towards Israel, and that's what's the most important. Yeah. Let me do it. Just, um, I, I want to say just on that thing, um, just because it's a project that's going again after three years, that the world has, I'm, I'm leaving food for thought, the world has changed a lot during the past three years. Facebook has exploded, and Twitter has been, you know, is the new Facebook, the new platform. So I think it's important to look at 
what uh, HMC was three years ago and what world it was in and, and kind of how the new media uh, plays a, a role, especially with the Arab Spring and everything, and, and kind of try to build on that, on the, the whole new media scene, to, to try to build on that. That wasn't a question, just a <laughs> point. Uh, be, and that'll be, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, that'll be the... Okay, so, um, first of all, as a representative of a product that did actually happen twice, once in a lifetime, I can tell you that when you do it the second time around, it is bigger and better. It's bigger you know, and better. I love you. Um, <laughs> but, um, so, first of all, I have absolutely no doubt, not whatsoever, that if you take this project upon yourself, you're going you're gonna to make sure that this project, and this is relevant to everyone, that you will make sure that this project is better, bigger and better than life, or else it's just not worth any of our time. Um, so I'm sure you guys do that, that's A. But maybe I missed it, and I'm not sure that I actually, if I was, maybe I missed it, but it, what are your measurements of success? Okay, so, so fine, so you'll make sure that they actually write the op-eds while they're sitting there, which, by the way, last year in Skill, that's what they did. But wh how are you going to know if it's good? Okay, so we have 100 participants, we have 100 op-eds. How do we know that it worked? We talked about What's your, okay, so okay, if you could, we talked about really, a, that we want a three different a, a newspaper, okay, publication, and a, two, two different a, foreign newspapers that would share this story. So out of all the 100 or 80 plus participants, we want five newspaper... News agencies. News agencies. agencies. Publishing. Publishing. That's, the, that's the measurement. But, but that, I this think, one of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's also important that it will be publicized in Israel also for the university, <coughs> but morally for uh, in certain news agencies in the world. We don't know exactly which. We didn't think of exactly which. And But as we said, the measures are... We think that the best measure of success is is their positive feedback from the people. And if if you look at, at videos from HMC, you see the positive feedback from the people, and that's what we, that's what we want to accomplish. That's the most important part. Okay. Well, last question. Um, just want to know if I mean, have any of you have been to the yeah. uh, just for some minutes, it's you know it's a temporary site, but it's not real stuff. Yeah. Okay. And if, uh, if I like it, uh, I think it's like to take a like I said, take a project that has succeeded and take a step forward. It's great. And uh, Professor, and Professor, the President Kabe, I'm sure he would love it. He, everything that's regarding to that faculty is flying on it. Uh, and what was mentioned here, I think the, the follow-up thing, because I, I saw it on our project after after you great maintain the success, you get the success in maintaining it. Like, to build also a strategy, how, how you continue to get the 80, the 100, I mean, you get, how, how, you, how you follow up on that, it's like the Facebook page. Well, I think of also applying to that, because I saw it on my project, we did it, we brought people here, and kind of...